out, in, out, in, and that's why I say I give it to him straight, I give it to him blunt. I was in and out of prison like a cock in a cunt. Right, yeah. right, okay, go on, give me the beat then. Motivation to think I've got a chance to do something here. Yeah? Uh, in the law of attraction, a positive thing makes another positive thing happen, which makes another positive thing happen. So me here being in you with this here is yeah. because of the law of attraction. Yeah. Because I believed in it and here we are. Stuck in a hole on the doll, devil wanting my soul. The only thing that keeps me rhyming is the love that you show and I know that I will go where you want me to go. What would you do watching your mum getting beat in black and blue? We tried to stop him but the fool just took it out on us too. So you're just lying there crying, there's nothing you can do. You're out of the house, you just get fucking bullied at school. When I think about my life, I just break down and cry, living a lie, slit my wrists, but I don't want to die. I'm taking payments from the devil because he's getting me high. I'm engaged to this depression and you're asking me why. This mad life that we're living, all taking, no giving. All stone cold bastards, but it's only drug driven. He was a lovely kid. He was the loveliest kid. He was actually he was the loveliest kid I had. Really kind, really caring and all that. The accident, I think that probably changed a lot. I had a hundred mile an hour car crash, should have died. I woke up to him going, well, we don't know how bad the brain damage is until he wakes up. And I couldn't admit that I was disabled because I didn't know. When you've got brain damage, you don't know. People are now around you notice. That, and they was like, oh, Peter's well weird. And people kept, kept turning on as weird. And I was like, no, I'm fucking not normal. It was slow, I noticed it. I just thought he was getting, you know, just recovering. But he, he got so far and he didn't get, he didn't get any better. I've never seen a car smashed up so bad and it was right on my brother's side and they've they've crashed it i don't know 100 they, they were hammering it he was just there with all these tubes in him and you know that's a terrible the police were there were trying to question him i couldn't believe it i saw pictures of the car and the, the car was actually in a cube where the full compact you know God knows how my brother survived. Cause he had blood clot, he had like damage to the brain, ripped liver, loads of different things. When he come out, he was six stone and he was outside the back of my mum's. And uh, they warned him, they said, you, you're gonna die if you leave here. And uh, he collapsed outside the back. And yeah, he looked like he was gonna die. And the copper said in, it, in the interview, like, Cross my heart and hope to die. He went, I never believed in miracles. He went, but I've got one sitting in front of me. And then obviously I had a brain scan. I've got all this damage on my front all over. Ended up getting addicted to painkillers, fucking in the guard, you know what I mean? Nasty, it was sick. You know, you mold out the window, you don't care who you are. On all the tours of all the jails done hospitals all around here, do you know what I mean? But like, yeah, it's just fucked up, <laughs> I found a subwoofer with white lines on it. You know, the original, you know what I mean? Grandmaster Flash. We just listened to the song over and over again as kids, like, wow, what is this music? When I heard it, 
yeah. I knew I could rap from that second. I knew I could rhyme. Rap, 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 rap. From the age of 14, I never noticed any difference in my brain until I was 21. When I was 14, I was like a man. I used to live here, I used to sell drugs, I used to hang around with 18, 19 year olds, and they used to sell drugs. And I used to sleep with birds. I was sleeping with a 27 year old, the fittest, one of the fittest birds in Ramsgate. So I'm naked on the bed. Yeah. He's a cat burglar, isn't he? That weeds and burgled people's houses. He come through the window, saw me asleep, bang, bang, hit my penis three times. Got done for a sex offence for attacking my penis. Uh, jealous. Because Marie obviously said to her, I'm like, yeah, you've got a big dick and I like his smile. So he knocked my three front teeth out. He knocked them up. Right, this, my teeth went up. So I had to, like, like, try and like, move them. They were moving around, they were coming out, do you know what I mean? They were done there and then. The photos after, I looked like I should be dead. 52 times he hit me with that rock. And you know what? He got done for GBH with intent. And he hit Maria with it once and she had brain damage. I moved down here when I was 15 from Gravesend. I met Peter because he was one of the first people that I spoke to around here. We were both young and then we started seeing each other and we were like, you know, they call it like first love, puppy love. And that was what it was. He was 18, I was 19. Like, it's my toy boy, not really though. He's always them seeing, like, every time he see me, like, he'd like, start him seeing in the street and I'd be like, oh, but really I liked it. <laughs> For real, bang me up with an 8 mil, only joking, mess from the beginning I've been smoking, I'm not coping, pull the rope in, don't drop the soap in gel, <laughs> cause you never get bell, living it up in the hotel hall, got nothing but a burn and a man in your cell, but you're hoping that the man don't make you a girl. <laughs> I think Peter's really talented. I just think that he just, you know, didn't have the right opportunities or didn't always go for it because of what was going on in his life. There weren't necessarily like the stability, do you know what I mean? Like, because, you know, he's, he was all over the place. I have to go out the house and go back in the house about four times before I remembered everything. I'd forget money, phone, ticket, charger, words, everything. His memory, Made it. falling over, forgetting things, losing things, repeating himself. It was very trying. I'm obviously not very well. I've got this illness, this illness, this illness. I'm disabled because I jumped into a car, made a stupid decision when I was 17, got brain damage. For me to learn something, I, I have to do it, try it about five times harder than what someone else would. I have to work around it. Everything's done by Google Assist. It's my memory, it, you know, it's, it, it turns the light on and off for me. It, it does everything apart from tidying my room up. It either isn't available or can't be played right now. You fucking had it there, you can't go Please don't talk to me that way. All my life, tablets, 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 these tablets for your epilepsy, tablets for this, tablets. I have to take 12 tablets a day, man. And like, that's another reason why in the end me and him, I couldn't be with him because it was too much for me, which is such a shame because we did really love each other. We're more family now, like we're like brother and sister me and Maria. And every now and again, like, we have a shag. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? And that's not a bad thing because I'm a single bloke. That is was, a promise. That's not true. It is. You went out and you come back with, you, you was over the centre and you had loads of stolen duvet hovers. I was like, where you been all day? They weren't all day. Oh, I, was, okay. I, I went out to get your money. I come back, I give back you your money. You come back ten hours later with nothing. Ten, ten hours later with nothing. I never took your money. Uh, well, no, you didn't take my money. You just no. didn't come back. I went, out with, I went out with your book to get your money. Yeah, and you come did have the money. All right, you did come, have the money, yeah. but you was gone for hours. No. 
don't say you was five minutes late. No, no, you're talking about when you was five minutes late when I had probation and then you was went to go and get the money and I was late for pro probation. I could have got breached when I threw the rock at your head. You were talking about that time, didn't you? No, it's a total different oh. time. But uh, you get the picture. No, it's not the. Yeah, like you, you know. Me and Peter, we used to argue like a lot because he used to go missing. I walked out of the flat and I saw him over the road at the shop and he was literally like out of his head on drugs and he had like a big bag of um, quilt covers so I knew he'd been shoplifting and I knew he was going around the estate selling them so I knew he had money and I was like where's my money right so I was so annoyed so I went up to him he saw me and I got him like that and then just bit the bottom of his ear off and spat it on the floor and then just walked off yeah, she did. She oh, bit my ear off. Grown back. Not grown back, what but it was only the size of a baked bean. It was literally the size of a baked bean. Yeah, I know. You could live without it. You, yeah, you I could live without it, but she go, spat it in my Thank face. You. Yeah, but then I picked up the evidence and threw it down the drain because I didn't want to get nicked for it. <laughs> Sorry. That's bad, isn't it? <laughs> He's alright. He got over it. He's still alive. When I first moved around here, which was oh, nearly four years ago, it was quite a good area. It wasn't actually bad. There wasn't really any drugs around here. Uh, later on, that's when it started. Some people coming into the area and then introducing it. It was really terrible. It's a very quiet area and a lot of people retire here. You have to find your own things to do. There's not too much to do. Like It's a seasonal area, so in the summer a lot of people come down from London. It's the end of the road, isn't it? Ramsgate, your time, train terminates it. You ain't going any further. You know, you know, let's go up. That's France. Right, so we go, oh, yeah, we'll start there. No, that's France, mate. Basically here is just like, where Londoners retire and they stick their old people, you know, you know, the ones with a bit of money, think they're sticking their relatives into a nice care home by the sea. They love that sea air. End up in a dirty little place in Cliftonville, getting some two bob state bird who, who's probably spitting in their dinner to wipe their asses, probably slapping them at the same time because they got dementia. They can't say nothing. First time I remember Newington, first ever time, was coming into the living room and seeing a red phone box to my right that was the only thing in the house. And we got that house because it had all, um, it had a lice infection, it all went up the wallpaper. Have you seen, like, when you come out of here, right, it looks kind of like a prison now. I could swing a line from my room to my neighbour four doors across from my window. If that's not like a prison block, then what the fuck is? And that's exactly what it's like. Prison in the ghetto, you've got everyone falling out of each other because they're living on top of each other. There's been three murders in this block, doesn't that teach you anything? There's not really much to do around here, so people do try and find their own entertainment, and it unfortunately does turn to doing drugs, and doing alcohol. That's what a lot of people do in a lot of different areas, though, to escape the everyday. Some of these people, though, that are going through, they're going through pain for a reason, and when I try and help them out, they try and take advantage of it. Sometimes around here, people are like, no, nah, you stay in your lane, like, and don't move up because Peter's a little bit vulnerable, they'll get him to do things that they don't want to do. I wear my heart on my sleeve and I really do, and it's fucked me up in so many relationships. Stop it, Colin. I grew up with it my whole life, watching my mum get beat up, so I don't think it's necessary this area. It's probably worse than some places, but I, I know, most of the girls I know have been hit by men. Peter never hit me. But obviously the other one did, like, you know, with him, he's like a big, like, soft, like, not soft, he's, not, he's annoying, do you know what I mean? Like, I want to punch him in the face, but he's not going to turn around and try and overpower me like that, do you know what I mean? No, you will see her. Pete, 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 when she chased shot over crowbar. Pete, 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 do you remember that time when I walked in that house, that flat? And just bastard that girl that was yeah. sitting there. Ripped all her hair, there's all ginger hair all over the floor. There's ginger hair all over the flat. I didn't even... Move near her, I wouldn't even sit in near her. You were seeing her behind my back. That's, That's why, why my mum beat her up. I swear down, I swear down, I never even petrified. Petrified. I swear down, I That's never That's why she got the crowbar her. out. I never even looked no, at no. her. She, That's a different Do you know why? Do you want to know why? Do you know she was she was about three years younger than me and I weren't even. Oh big deal, three years. Wow, man. 
but three years. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Peter, yeah. stop lying. Yeah. We've been split up for twenty years. I, I, Just admit the fact that you're going to have a little ginger fraggle. That girl got beaten up for nothing. Ooh. You've been caught cheating as well. Ooh. Oh, I bet that was a sight to saw, right? So, so, so you've so been, been, been caught cheating as well. We don't want to start going and No, I'm just saying, though, that right, but so I caught her in the wardrobe. Tap, bullshit. No, but just I caught her in the wardrobe, didn't I? You did catch her in the wardrobe, yeah, you did. Yeah, I caught her in the wardrobe. Because you... Yeah, no wouldn't she be snapping? No violence! Don't act like I'm not beating you up. She has beaten up before. Shut up, Mum! No, like we're all right. We're just best mates no, now. Up. <laughs> like if people around here know about my life, they know I've been through a lot. Yeah, it did start with the best of childhood, but I wasn't care a lot. It was a bit dodgy when I was really young. I had it hard, but I come out of it, and you know, I love my mum. Like my mum's not a bad person. My mum's not well, really mentally ill. I help her out if I can. My brother's not well. He's really mentally ill. You know, like, I have to deal with him. You know, my dad's a wanker. He's lived in the same town as me my whole life. They expected me to get in contact with him. So now I spoil my son. You know what I mean? I don't get, get a lot of money, but what I do get, I spoil him a lot. You know what I mean? So what? You know, he helps me out a lot. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm disabled. I have to rely on him for a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? That's why I like, he's up. my best mate, you know. He comes to me for advice. He knows that I've... I've got experience, because I have, I have beat it, you know what I mean? I've been amongst it. Oh my God, I was terrible. <laughs> I used to write inbox private messages on, on Facebook, like for everyone, on status, <laughs> and everyone would read my <laughs> private, my most in-depth private secrets. <laughs> All right, and Becky, I'll come around and um, make sure you, make sure when I come in, you suck it straight away and things like that. Like, everyone would see it. Everyone would see it, and then someone would go, you need to take that down. <laughs> like, yeah, I've seen brain damage, like with one of my uncles, like completely take the man's soul. He's not even the same. He was so proud of himself before it. He was like, yeah, I'm all this, I'm all that. But then, as soon as stuff like that happens, it can literally, it will never be like, you'll never get that confidence back. What I was lucky with is, uh, I really, um, all I ever wanted to do was make lyrics, and straight off the bat when I come out of hospital, I was, I was like, I was still trying to make lyrics straight away. Yeah, he, like, like, he, and, he worked, um, and I worked with the dis disability and be able to make lyrics with it. Talking about my life with drugs and rife. All my waistband produced was a phone and a knife All I seemed to do was take the same step twice When I tried to move my foot was stuck in the dice And my race and when the fuck will I learn to behave My self-destruction made me function for the drugs that I craved It's like my body ain't been buried and you piss on my grave It's the stage on my destiny lord to rot in a cage I think my life is worth more than shit Shower and shave being brave Ain't working cause I feel like a slave to the game I'm looking deep man for someone to blame That I'm a danger Fucked. My head's in a mess. I've been released and now this fraggle's got a blade in his chest. I oh, know I'm at a shady mark, you ain't loving you less. If I have to die trying, son, I'll give you the best. Stuck in a hole, ain't about living life on the dole. Losing control from my body, wasting, losing my soul, feeling low. Years of drug abuse is taking its toll. I gotta push it back together and get back on the roll. Cause I ain't losing my soul. I can express myself through my music. I can talk in a different way. I understand I've got limitations and I'm disabled, but I can work with my disability now because I accept it. I'm a little bit pissed, but I still come in like a is in the mist with a little bit of twist and a spike. This is me flipping my tongue like a dike. I swear you could go into a room and just spit off everyone and talk about things, but in such a funny way and, you know, it's just all... But he never got a pen and a pad, which really annoyed me. He never wrote is, you know, it should have had a pen and a pad. You know, he didn't, he just, he was just a casual rapper. He'd just go around rapping every day and rap and rap and that's how he got better. But there was no structure, you know, and that's obviously through chaos, you know. You know, you, if you don't go, you get brought up around chaos, you end up acting chaos when, chaotically when you're older. But yeah, he had some, he had a special gift, a very special gift. I beat Mega Man in a battle. Look. Mega Man, Soul Sonic Crew. They was MCing in Belmarsh Prison. They, they, he can't deny this. MCing in Belmarsh Prison. I went, let me have a go. They went, you want a detox fan? I went, yeah, I can rap better than, better than any of you. Go on then, Bob. And I went, done my shit, yeah. And they were like, whoa, Bob. He gave me a phone number, yeah? Meg, fake number. 
I come out and rag it, and it's not even a real number. See, that's 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 the strength for people, you know. Please listen. Which goes after. I want to get a pen and a pad so I write in some of the lyrics. I said, I will be done with the ladies at 21. We need to cat to come to get me, be a father to my son. Well, I've, I've done the choruses and my verses, so that's, you know, right. I've been experimenting in all sorts of music that's that true. is like rap music, but it's just done in a I'm different way. My friends are dropping like flies, but now they're dropping like the rain. Disconnected. Coward of the County, that's the song. If you listen to the song and the cleverness of it. Like the man, obviously, as in God. It's like, it's not rap music. It's like, it's, it's a story about it. Same sort of thing we're talking about. Some of it was very clever and like, people like Buddy Holly and that. Masters in the game. And like, when he walked into a black club, skinny little white boy with glasses, they looked at him like, he was like the Eminem of the day, not Elvis Presley, he was, the M&M of the day. That's why I'm really working on my music. Like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want fame and shit. I just, I, I just want to be recognised as a good musician because I am. I'm disabled, I can still do it. So that means something, doesn't it? You know, if my brain was totally normal and active, obviously it might be a little bit, um, might be a little bit, but it might be worse, who knows? If I put a lot more effort into it, like what I am now, putting effort into it, I've written loads of lyrics, I've got loads of lyrics I wrote on lockdown. Like songs and after songs. Like, but the bike got shot up. You know, someone took shots at the, the booth and uh, ruined it. You mean you can't have a booth where people are shooting at it, you know, and it just missed someone who was in the booth. Bullet missed their head by about that far. Hello, Moto. Make a gap so they can do the cut. Hello, Maria, I'm on the phone. And this is how I do it better change my... Are you right? Yeah, but I'm holding a gun, so I don't get scared when I say ya. Uh, all right? Because right, I'm a bit of a nut or not, all right? I'm, I'm holding a gun and I'm picking you up. I'll fight you, I'll get it. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it! Okay. Quarter past eight, we won't be late. It takes a tough soul to keep the food on the plate, all right? See you later, all right? Yeah. CD of me, yeah, from when I was like 
How old? 25 years ago. 25 years ago, yeah. It would have been 15, I was 30. Yeah, I was 15, you was 30. Yeah, I was 15. And I, I wrapped about 20p or something for about half an hour. Literally, and she's still got it on tape. I've got it on tape. And she still listens to it now. Like, oh, I, I don't know how to put a cassette tape onto CD. You do. Yeah, you Can we do this? Yeah. I've always been a writer, I've always been a freestyler. I made my first song when I was eight years old. It's like something that extracts a part of your soul. Around this area, me and my mate Toby, we sort of like bought the first rap CD to hear. And I know that I will go where you want me to go. What would you do watching your mum getting beaten black and blue? We tried to stop him, but the fool just took it out on us too. So you're just lying there crying and there's nothing you can do. And when you're out of the house, you just get fucking bullied at school. When I think about my life, I just break down and cry. Living a lie, slip my wrist, but I don't want to die. I'm taking payments from the devil because he's getting me high. I mean, when that song came out in 2003, seriously, when we brought that around here, like, that was like, wow. People were like, I can't believe it. It's the EK measure on the fuck of drug measure. It's a hard life. Army and state, it takes a real tough soul to keep fooling up, mate. Don't alienate your haters, cause we're just like you. Our avenues may be different, but we need to move forward. It's a hard life. Army and state, it takes a real tough soul to keep your fool up, mate. Don't alienate your haters, cause we're just like you. Our avenues may be different, but we need to pull through. Found out today that um, my dad died. Fuck, sorry, man. No, 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 um, I feel a bit bad. I didn't believe him when he told me. But what do you mean you didn't believe him? I didn't believe he was dying. I ain't gonna lie. I felt, I felt a bit upset. You know, could, could have gone and seen him and that, but I wouldn't have had a connection with him. Yeah, had a connection with Jimmy, which is cool. You know what I mean? they got on so that's good enough for me but I can't you know I only went around there and see him once in, in, in life and it was like he didn't want to see me so that's more why I, I, I support you know I... Hello. Hi. Hi. my mum knows because my mum had a go at him for it so. He went, yeah, I'll meet Jimmy, but I'm not meeting the crazy one. <laughs> Bad, isn't it? He didn't want to see me at first. He didn't want to know me. And then when I sorted myself out, I suppose, and it all went, or when he was in his deathbed, I don't know, he just might have changed his mind, might have changed a little bit. But I never give him the chance. You know, to do it. He did produce me if he went for that bloke for the beer, so, you know. You gonna go to the funeral? No. No. Just, uh, I can't even sit there and be um, fake. You know. I doubt he'd go to mine, so. He works fit and healthy, so. You know. Should have just that really a bit. When my son says, Dad, it's an alien word to me. I always ask Mark, what's it like to have a dad? It feels, what's it feel like? No. I'm just curious. Losing my marbles, man. Going the long way round. Um, I forgot. I went to walk out the shop without without anything. I paid for it and just went to walk out. Nuts. They got, um, only because I was wearing one of these puppies, I survived, man. Otherwise, I would have been out the window. When we was kids, we had it really fucking hard, yeah. Like 
to the point where we had to feed ourselves, you know. So we just had alcoholic parents, so had cardboard up, up at the windows. And just the people used to fucking throw things through the windows and call us tramps and that. People must have seen stuff, but they obviously didn't care enough to... Um... Yeah, they wouldn't have let that go on, though. No, they wouldn't, no. What happened then, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let it go on. It was just shouldn't have happened, shouldn't have been gone on in the first place. I remember my stepdad, when he used to get drunk, he'd just turn into an animal, absolute animal. We were terrorised. I used to be so scared of going home that I'd shit myself in class because of, of what used to go on in, indoors. Oh, a hell of a lot of abuse. Abuse you couldn't even imagine. Abuse you have to see, all, you know, he had wrists like, up, like that, his ankles were thick. He had a build of a Neanderthal. It was so strong. All the muscles and the navy tattoos. He was in the navy, and he was like very hench. Done the field gun. I don't know if you, anyone knows a field gun. He was on ra radar in the navy. Like he kept getting promoted and demoted because of his drinking. But he was really clever. He knew loads about loads of shit. Like I used to ask him questions all the time. He lose notes, man. Well, clever bloke. He just acted so thick. Oh, he knocked me out twice. Yeah, complete cold. But, uh, one time he knocked me out. My brother shit, and apparently I was so knocked out, my brother said he thought I was dead. I was like, knocked out completely. And uh, yeah, I was, I was yeah, KO'd. Yeah. <laughs> um. Kicked every door off, off the house. That's why there's no doors in the house. He kicked them all up and put his fist through them. He was a big, big guy at one point. That's how we arrived, is basically by having a fight. So that's how it happens, isn't it? You're getting bullied and then you, you fight back and then, it, and then they don't like it. And then you start getting the ones that bullied you. And then you turn into the bully. It's the thing that you hated the most. I knocked Jerry out when I was 40. It was about four or five of us from there. Yeah. Who jumped in? Yeah, but I was knocking Jerry yeah, out. I beat Jerry. I beat Jerry out. I remember I phoned social services. I went, I went, um, yeah, I my stepdad, my stepdad tried to hit up. me, and that's the first time I beat him up, and I laid him out, and and he was laying on the floor. So you so feel bad for him I ran after at all? No, I ran to the, I ran to the phone no, box. No, did you feel bad one little bit? Not even like a week later. No, because because I ran to the phone box oh. and to get him out the house, and I ended up getting took into care. Yeah. I thought they would let me stay in the house and get rid of him because he was a problem, yeah. Yeah. And, but they went, no, you're too young to stay on your own. You've got to go and care. Yeah. Boom, and that and that ruined me. You'd be worrying at school, and you'd be coming back and I wishing that they when we were young, and nine times out of ten they were. It was just chaotic, but there was, you know, there, there was love there. And, you know, my mum was ill. My mum was, like, you know, mentally, mentally, like, ill. And she got, you know, Jerry, she had Jerry, she couldn't go, she, she suffered with terrible anxiety. So she would have to use Jerry to get up, go up and shop for her because she couldn't get out, you know? Yeah, my, my dad even uh, ruined my mum. She used to hallucinate because she loved my dad so much. She used to hallucinate. Like, I think she's seen him in the street and that. He's a uh, part of the reason why it all has gone. I love her to bits and I, I wouldn't change my mum for the world. Being the older brother, I think somehow, you know, I think it affected them more because they were focused on that and I was focused on them, if you know what I mean. We also all had um, um, comfort thing. Yeah, yeah, I did. You used to go like that, rub your nose. Yeah, yeah, I did. I sucked. I sucked me up. And I done this, which is a bit. Um, it is my pain. I tell you this drink, number one worst drug of all. Right, you get two people, even two people, on smack in the room. Yeah, they ain't gonna start fucking hurting each other. Right, you get two people on any other drug apart from alcohol. Um, see you later, windows smashed, doors are coming off, and you're getting it round the edge, saying. Oh, wow. 
away from them, bro. You just walk away from the chest. You don't stab them. Bro. That's just giving them a lot, a lot of bad energy. You know what I mean? And you're going to get punished for, for it. If you're being jailed, and they're going to love you, they're going to be shagging even more, man. <laughs> and then what are you going to do then? You're in jail, you're in a cell, what are you going to do? You're sort of climbing the walls. Crazy. Stabbing people like over the wall. Let them go. It might be hard, but just do it. Prison was like a big, big, big part of my life for a long time. I used to go to the shop and say, I'm taking this. And I know I would get my door kicked in and I'd go to prison. That's how I used to get looked after. The system used to look after me. I was too much for people. Was like, and I'd just go in prison. That was my care plan. I remember I see one of my best mates when I, as soon as I walked in. He was 21, yeah, I was 17. He was moving out a while. I'd just gone in there. I just turned 17. They went, where's the parcel? We know you've got a parcel up inside you. And I fainted and the phone came out of my ass, yeah. Seven Kinder Eggs, steroids, a phone. They went, yeah, we got it, seven wraps. And they did know that I had seven fucking Kinder Eggs in me. And um, a month's worth of steroids ended up breaking in my system. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. climbing, like, really, like, it actually was so weird that it stopped the clock and give me all this, like, uh, I was shitting out drugs for weeks, man. And I was barred from Elmery, like, they was like, you can't come into the prison, you smuggle drugs in here, you're not allowed in here, you're an A-cat now. Straight to Belmont. Boom. Well, I'll become a Muslim. I did. My Muslim name's Hamza. I did, I, I, was, I was vulnerable, I went to a place, I met a fucking really, really safe um, Muslim geezer called Mohammed Saeed. I just see a nice part of it. I see a nice man, and he's fucking probably the hardest geezer I've ever seen. I remember when he jumped up, he done a spinning kick and just touched the tip of my nose like that. And I thought, you could have took my head off. Anyone can get robbed in jail. Don't matter who you are. If you've got spice and 10 people want it, they will go in and they get it off you. I've been involved in a lot of violence, you know what I mean? I've been hurt a lot of time, you know, when he jumps. You know, it's always like about five men on you when they're trying to rob you. I've had my face put over, over a kettle and a spoon in my arms. Basically rape, dirty Nazi rapists for a bit of spice. For numbskulls, jail is for numbskulls. People who say, I've done 50 years in jail, mate, I'm well heavy. Yeah, you're fucking fraggle. Look how many times you got caught. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're obviously not that clever at doing what you were doing because you was in prison the whole time. It's one of the most saddest times of my life. That was seeing us all on the same spur and seeing what it all come to. Three brothers on the same wing, same spur. We were all in that spur, mate. It made me feel like, yeah, this is bad. This is bad. I spent 10 years in sentences and I spent about three years in um, remand. I got out when I was 32 when I last went to prison. Been out for nine years, so I think nine years, ten years in. It's part of my identity that I got out of it. I mean, otherwise my son would have thought going to prison was really good. I told him all the time it was for losers, man. But I'm a loser. It's an actual world of pain and misery. And you can see that, but I'm going to get better you know, stick with me. I remember from 2000 and I'd say 12 to 13, I think he was out of prison that whole time. And it was, I would see him, but it would be like, you know, I wouldn't be like happy, I wouldn't be excited. The worst thing is being embarrassed by your parents, especially out in public. And just that was, that happened a lot with my dad. He came down and he's waving a machete outside. And then he shut it down, he said, Mum, he said, I'm oh, sponsor outside. And I thought he was joking, we looked out and I'm oh, sponsor we walked round our house. He had a knife and he had an England flag. And he just come up and he went, this is for England. And he was slicing his wrist and all I can remember was this. Get him, boy, and he's dumb side attacking me. And he's going, get him, boy, and he's getting, pulling my ear, and that dumb chewing on my ear. And 
know how that I'll get up and that and I'll just do a hot off. Yeah. Right there my window the dog dragged me on the floor and just started ripsing me up. Yeah, I've had my head smashed off curb. I've done it about 12 times and I was awake for the whole day. Back then I was I was a little bit naughty myself. I had a little knife in my pocket. So we're walking down the road and I just I put the knife in his back. The handle come off but the knife was stuck in his back and then just fell to the floor. He went, you, you stabbed me, you, you effing stabbed me. Twice someone had gone to kill me, one was my sister. She got nicked for attempted murder. And uh, the neighbours even heard her say, she smacked me over the head three times with a um, statue, plant pot, and... We was arguing, so I picked up this glass jar thing, smashed it over there with it. Then a pot, then a statue. All snapped over my head. Yeah, I got Nick for it, said a fell over, they tried doing her for attempted murder. Uh, <laughs> he was always shoplifting. Them fences that go up, the jagged fences, got his finger caught, he chops his finger. Oh, I had to my own finger up off the floor, which was fucking horrible feeling. And walked in there and I went, my fingers come off. The woman fainted, but bang. I always say that's a punishment from God, man, took my finger off, you know, Stephen. It's hard to think that I never knew Dad before the, the car crash, which obviously affected him mentally. I've only ever known my dad with the car accident, but I do believe things happen for a reason, and I do believe he was going down a bad track in life. He was a madman. He was known as Crazy Pete around here. So I remember one story my friend told me. Yeah, I see your dad the other day. There was these eight men, and it was just him, and he went up to him and tried picking a fight with him. And this is not someone who's going to live very long picking fights with eight different men. He was skinny as anything. He was, he was about as skinny as he was now. He was going out to fight eight fully grown men and they had weapons. I remember my friend said, you just see him get him kicked the shit out of. Don't want no trouble, bruv. You know what I mean? Like, I can take a kick in. Like, I can take a good kick in. I didn't win, but let's just say I didn't lose. I got knocked out about 40 times, but I got up every time and in the end he just shook my hand and walked away to give up, so. I think it started with my nan, because they, they all blame my nan for a lot. When we used to get chased out of the house at three in the morning, we used to go to our nans. I knew her more than I knew them, so it's like strangers telling me that my nan's bad, do you know what I mean? I, I didn't even know these people and they're going on about my nan and so I've got strangers telling me that my nan's a cunt and she's dead, can't stick up for herself. So I don't really like to have nothing to do with them over that. And they really do hate her, like even, even in death. That's something they've got to get over. We ain't born with love. I see it as that we are like computers. We're all pure and we have a programme and then as you go on, you get viruses put on you. The more viruses you get, your computer starts working slower and slower. Instead of being slower and slower, it's just more pain and pain and pain for the human. I had the car crash, got addicted to codeine, but I was doing it like every half day in the end, and they just said, you're not having them anymore. But some dude in the back said, oh, I can get you something to make you feel better. And it was a couple of lines on the dragon. And, yeah. Living with somebody who's on heroin is a nightmare because you don't get any help and there's no one to go to. I had a problem with Mr. Spoon for a few years, cooking it all up inside himself. He was got me on the ground. It started when he was like in his early twenties, and then it got worse as he got into his mid twenties. He started doing it more and more. It's a moral habit, it creeps in, it's the devil, man, it's the ducky devil, I don't know how it gets you, and then it gets in, it takes all your confidence, rips everything away from you, it absolutely fucks you up, mate, it's the worst thing in the world, it comes in as the best thing you've ever seen, you know, like the best thing ever, amazing, brilliant, loved it. I got some Bristol gear once, oh my god. Fantastic day on that, but fucking went over. You know, 
gapped out for about uh, 48 hours. Woke up, I'd pin hanging out of my arm, I did the rest of it, bang, and I woke up about another 48 hours later. It was really terrible. I couldn't get on to him because I couldn't talk to him. You can't talk to somebody that's on heroin. There was one time where I overdosed and it scared me. I could feel my body going over, I felt my head swell up and I hit the floor, yeah? And my mum heard me hit the floor. It was the day I got out of prison, so my mum would have been a little bit wary around me anyway. So she heard the bang and, and she said I went up there and blew. She had to call the ambulance. I was dead. She's had to do that to like, my, my brother Jimmy as well, like, not just me. A couple of times, him. Fuck. Jesus Christ. Peter. Fuck, mate. Peter. Peter. Come on, mate. Wake up. Fuck up. Wake up, mate. Come on. Peter. Oh. Off me, mate. Peter. Wake up, Peter, come on. Peter, you're off me, mate. Peter, you're off me, mate. Peter, you're off me, mate. 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 you they just saved my fucking life and I'd moan at them. Seriously. Oh, I'm clucking, what's the app for? You know what I mean? Job on your mug. That's how bad the job gets you, man. You, you fucking scream at someone for saving your life because they took the heroin away from you. It was just so horrible. Every day was just painful and I hated being on it. Some people love it, you know. Some people loved it and lost so many friends. Me and Peter, we got, yeah, we were using it together. My other brother, he went through what he went through. He had the worst of it in the developing years. They say the first three years are the most crucial issue of when you're alive. Being in the body is the most important when you're developing. And my brother in the first three years, he had the worst of it. Things he must see, like, you know, as a little child, like I said, going back to the computer analogy, he had it early and, he, you know, he had the viruses first, you know. Amphetamines, without a doubt, ruined my brother Brendan, like, proper ruined him. He would stay up for nights upon nights upon nights and you could see him slowly lose it. But then he'd come round, yeah? Lose it, come round. Lose it, come round. And then one day, he just lost it and he never come round. If you've got a, a loved one who's like, it does extremely hurt because it's like they're dying. Do you know what I mean? It's like, they're partly dead. And it does hurt. I think it's like, you know, you see people die. Yeah, they, they go, they, but you've got that memory of them in a nice way, but when they're real and they're not who they are, it makes you, um, it's sad. It's very sad, yeah. Because when I was younger, I was always terrified of losing my mind. Because that's like losing your soul to me. I think it's a thing worse than death, to tell you the truth. I would much rather die than lose my mind, 100%. No way would I want that to happen to me. And it hurts, like, I hear, like, little cunts fucking, you know, terrorising him and that, and they ain't got a fucking clue, do you know what I mean? But they would have been wet in the bed if they had to see the stuff we see, you know? You had three brothers all addicted to heroin, man. You've got to think, fucking spoons get burnt up. I feel sorry for my mum, but she was drinking at the time, so she probably can't remember a lot of it. Just a fucked up time of my life, that was. Yeah, I believe there's uh, power, my brother. You know, we'll get better. You know, hopefully on the next, you know, next journey or wherever we go. I don't know. It's all right people saying to me, oh, kick him out of the house, but he's your son. You don't know if he's going to end up dead on the street. You're not going to do that. 
they sent me and Angie to start. They were either going to put Angie in care in Scotland somewhere where I was going to have to live here on my own and COVID on my own because I just went with Angie and then we ended up there six months. So I asked one particular family member, would they take my youngest Brendan's and why me and Angie went to start? He was only 16 so he couldn't come with us. Uh, she says, no, it might affect the, my boys. Your boys are on drugs and that. Brendan wasn't on, but he was when we came back from South. Yeah. And we wanted to get him away from that. And so you're reaching out for some help and your own family won't help you. And he could have been saved. That's what hurts. He could have been saved. When I came back, my house was absolutely demolished, wasn't it? I walked in the house, there was somebody upstairs being sick in the toilet. Obviously he'd been doing heroin. What they tried to take us away from, we came back to. Having a son was a heroin addict. It was horrible. I used to wait for knocks on the door or telephone or something to vote. Either they were dead or they'd been arrested. I used to wait for a bang on the floor up there and I knew he was either dead or something had happened to him up there. And that's what he was like all the time. I did drink. I admit that I was a bad drinker, which didn't help with Peter's upbringing. So I wasn't always on the ball to look out for these things, you know. I was about five, six, yeah. They were just neighbours and they had a son our age and we sort of ran around with him. And went upstairs and he went, yeah, go on, watch the porn with his kid, yeah. Weird porn. They were, I, I watched Animal Farm when I was about seven. And he went, come on, let's all get naked, yeah. We were running around his room naked, yeah. If you got caught, then you had to rub Willis. The only rules of the game was no one was allowed in the cupboard and Dave just like no one's allowed in the cupboard so I reckon that from the next room he had a bit where he could just get in there and just filming us or whatever. Was it a fucking pedophile? That is how I was introduced into sex. We had a sex gang when we was eight. It was sheds. We just to go there and have sex. We had a flag and everything. We had women involved. Well, not women, but girls. A couple of 12-year-old girls, obviously, they were being abused around the area. And then we started introducing to drugs and like looking at people that were doing drugs and then we wanted to do what they were doing. And you hear about this drug that makes you feel like Superman. I just wanted to be Superman, so I took an acid when I was about eight. I didn't feel like Superman, I just tripped right out and laughed for about 16 hours. I loved it. We were all worried, we were all confused, we were all scared. Well, me and Peter especially, because me and Peter were like, we were scared, scared little kids, you know. I could go on for years about how, you know, how parents shouldn't treat, you know, their kids. But what, 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 what benefit would I get in hating my family, you know, when I know how bad it can be myself? I was a heroin addict with a dad, you know. That's bad, isn't it? That's scummy. Things I was doing to myself, I was a dad. Well, bad. You know? So well should have put my son like before that, but no, you don't. You're just greedy and it's just greed. And if you don't come to a certain part of your life and think, well, I've got to, I've got to actually fucking do something about this, really have, or I'm gonna be dead. And that's it, that's it. You see all your mates dying around you, you keep surviving all these fucking miraculous accidents. There's only so many you're gonna survive, isn't there? Cat's only got so many lives and Signal. Just tell him when I wake up first thing in the morning, yeah, and I go downstairs and I hear my mum going like blaming herself for our childhood. I get up, it's, I just got up and I send messages I shouldn't really send. Tell him that, yeah, it's just, it's, I don't really mean it as bad as what it sounds, but Brendan is stinking and, and he, he gets whiz for him and it's not, it's not on. Brendan's getting his whiz for him and Brennan's taking whiz. So if he wants to start blaming people, then I can blame him for that. It, but we, we don't want to play the blame game. And then I won't blame him for Brendan, and then he can't blame Mum for him and me. How can you walk straight if you're walking backwards? You, you can only see clearly when you're walking straight. Walking backwards is only going to cause you problems. A drug I thought I could control, I was wrong, it crushed my soul. It took the love from deep within and turned me into a man of sin. From the, from the first time I tried it, it felt so right, it crushed the pain and gave me height. 
I said I'd do it once a week. That was until my life became bleak. From once a week to three to four, I'm in control. You're not anymore. Now I'm riding on the dragon's back. I need to be where demons will attack. To lie and to steal and to not care anymore. My soul is possessed. All I need is a war. Now there's only two ways to go between good and evil, which way I should know. I need to choose careful, I need to be right. My soul is eternal, it's between darkness and light. I didn't know about things like heroin. I didn't, I'd, I'd heard of it, but didn't know about it. I didn't know how bad it was, I didn't know how serious it was. I was so naive, I'd find bits of foil and then I'd end up finding needles. And then I ended up getting caught up in it as well. I went over three times. That to bring me back to life three times because my tolerance was a lot lower than Peter's. Like I wasn't used to as much. And then uh, to, two of my friends found me on the floor. That to get an ambulance out to get me and that to bring me back to life. I actually couldn't be sitting here. Like there, there have been times where I've actually gone over and one time I was out for seven minutes. Peter had to ring the ambulance. I grew up with people being like, eh, do you know what I mean? Because my dad's a gypsy or whatever, so like people look at you like, eh. at school we get called names for being gypsies or I'm half Indian as well. So that's one thing, yeah. But like with the stigma of like heroin, it's just horrible and you feel dirty. I just tried to get better, but it absolutely traumatised me. I got out of it, but I don't really think I've ever really recovered from it, to be honest with you. Like, I'm definitely a different person. It knocks the confidence out of you. My best mate died. Uh, he was 22 years old. He, he was, you know, he, he had a heroin overdose. Um, he, he didn't like to share his heroin. Shouldn't really use on your own, but he was like, it makes you greedy anyway. But he didn't share his heroin, so he'd done it on his own and he had the, the heating on full blast. And his body was in there for five days, I think three or five days with the heating on full. It was like when they went in there, he was supposed to have been black. And, like, and then when I think of things like that, like, that didn't even make me give up heroin. Do you know what I mean? Like that. My kids was being late for school. Uh, the school got in touch with social services and they just said, look, if this carries on, you could lose your kids. So I was like, mate, I'm out. So I finished with him and that's how we split up. And, and then I got off it, moved away from the area. I split up with Peter, I went live with my dad and then I come back once everything was out of my system. It's Pete and I can run to the beat. This one is heavy and this one is I'll take your call right now. Just leave you a message after the tone. Betty, I just had a whoopsie in my panties. No, Betty, I will not do that for you. You are very naughty for even asking me in the first place. <sighs> I don't like it, dear. It's very spooky and I feel very scared. <laughs> This place, this place, this place right in front of us. This place, this place. The fear of the clock this place. drives people to do the things they do. You was just stuck in a cell, uh, uh, like as a kid, you know. Nothing, it give you nothing. I was awake about 15 days, no sleep, with 10 minutes here and there. I was going through pain actual pain so I give myself physical pain to take away the mental anguish and the inner anguish which is the legs can't can't keep your legs still that's more than, than any pain that you can that's the worst pain that's a pain cutting yourself's not a pain it just goes and it stings for a little while that inner pain you've got when you're clocking you can't describe to no one I remember I cut my wrist, yeah, that way. 
bang, it went like that. So I saw a few carts, I thought, what's the fucking point in stopping? And she carried on and 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 on. And, on. and then, then it got to be an addiction. Then when she starts to do something, so then it, it starts getting addicted, it actually starts doing like, you get, your endorphins run for your blood. When you cut yourself, the endorphins run around your head. When, you're, when you take heroin, the endorphins run around your head. So it's only natural, if you're clucking and you ain't got no medication, you're gonna want them endorphins to run around your head still. So you beat yourself or you cut yourself. I wasn't the person I am now, no way. I was a boy then, I was a heroin on it. You mold out the window, you don't care who you are. And you've got to admit these things. People would keep that as a secret for the rest of their life and not tell no one. And that would eat them alive. You know, I just come out with it. I got off of it once when I had a son, but because I've done it for my son, I got back on it. The only time you can do it is about being the most selfish bastard in the world and doing it for yourself. It's the only way you're going to do it. Anyone who tells me any different, they got off of it for this person. If that relationship messed up, they go straight back on the heroin. You can't, you can't do it for someone else. You have to want to do it for yourself. That's all I know about God. You know what I mean? I asked, I, I asked the question in, in my prison cell, is there a God? And my whole cell lit up like a proper horrible white light. Just told me like flashes in my mind and that, and gone. What I miss is that warm feeling, the release of when you go from being that ill to feeling well again. It's the nicest feeling in the world. But the nasty feeling after that you're, you're, you're stung with is you need more and more and more. And I remember when I got off of it all anyway, I stopped taking it. I said I was clean, but what I'd do is I'd, on the weekend, I'd spend about 500 quid on it, have no money during the week, you know what I mean? Spending all my money on it on the weekend, but saying I was clean. And then when I stopped doing that, I started drinking and saying I was clean. Because the government says it, it's okay for you, alcohol. I was a big piss that I was waking up four, four cans of special brew and a bottle of wine in the morning, yeah? I was embarrassing my son, getting into fights, asking people to hit me with bricks, acting like a proper fraggle. Never tried crack? Yeah. I loved a bit of snowball, man. I used to do crack and heroin together. Yeah, stick that in me, mate, I'll be flying. Fucked. Going in and out of jail, drug habit, just become a father. It was a drug rehab in um, Rochester. He'd done it in the prison. There was like 21 spots for like rehabilitation. It was like a six month course. Done therapy, lived with each other. Everyone knew everyone's darkest secrets. It was all wrapped around the 12 steps. It's kind of like a visual representation of who he was. He was in a really bad place. And the fact that I can even talk to him now today and be like, get asked for advice about, you know, if I'm doing something, because he's lived a long life. Because the fact that he was in that way, he was a person that, you know, I thought at one point he was going to die. But I haven't run away from my area. I've stayed amongst it. I've been in a room where people have done it in front of me. I put myself in that situation purposely. So the temptation's there and I can leave it. If you run away from that, you've got to face your fears. There's a lot of people who still hated him. Like he did get like jumped from people and stuff like that, even when he was trying to be a better person, which the world can do that to you. You can be on the right track, you know, wanting to better your life, and then something gets thrown in the works and you're like, you don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, you good? Fuck, you know, Jimmy, I've been trying to get an ambulance, but it's not nice. You know, it's hard to get rid of one. What's brought this on now? Ace. Everything of joy is fucked up, and that drug's so bad. What, this is Jimmy you're talking about? Yeah. 
totally gone. Tyrion was a brain to like just do different people. Oh, I had to tell myself I'm burning off the screen. Building up, the fucking world building up. Worry it'd be bad. I haven't got a brother to talk to. I've got two brothers in the house and I can't talk to one of them. It's madness, like, since the filming of this, like, both of my brothers have been sectioned. One's been in and out twice, and one's just gone in, like, it's quite madness, isn't it, to think that. I've been in this situation, yeah, before, before them two, yeah, I was in these, I was going through this when I was 16, going in mental, I was, I got a section when I was 16. Um, so that was happening to me then, like, around until I was about 21, I had a bit of a fucking night, nutty period. Like, a bit, you know, it was a bit biblical, it was a bit, a bit of an awakening period, but I got confused. And at one point, I was, I was very strange, do you know what I mean? But um, at the same time, I was growing up. But it, I had to find myself, right? Like, find what level I was at at that time, and uh, yeah, very, very difficult like stage in my life. Like I started to read the Bible and I found it poetic, and I found it helpful, and I found it, you know, I like the chapters, I like the message of, of Jesus, like the message. I'm at an emotional stage now right, when you're talking about my brother, right, and, you know, where they're both a bit, they were both in the same situation, they're both not themselves, so um, I sort of feel a bit alone, a lot without them, so. Someone once told me that madness is the first lesson you learn, sometimes the last. And if you're born into a world of madness, if you're there, you're never going to leave me alone. Your house has always been fucking pure madness. The dynamics with you, your mum, your brothers and everything. I think you've got so much strength, the fact that you're actually in there and you're more stable now than you have been in a fucking long time. Yeah. And you're holding it down within those like psychodynamic. I had to pray mm. to God, yeah. I never thought I could give up the need for the heroin that I had. I knew if you had come off drugs, you had to be around them, watch the daily grind and actually yeah. see your people fail in front of you yeah, and you yeah. keep clean, just keep yeah. clean for one more day yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then you notice how much better you're doing than them. Keep clean another day, mm. you notice you're doing a little bit yeah. better and then it's it's only when you'll go comparing, you're doing the, these things and you're thinking, well, I'm actually not in that place anymore. Mm. Life plays shit, shit, yeah. shit yeah, cards. Well, well we play ourselves yeah, shit, yeah. shit cards as well. Yeah, we felt, we, 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 yeah. we, we knew that it weren't right and we done it. And, yeah, you know, we got to take some responsibility, but we were young and yeah. kids at yeah. the time. Yeah. I wish I had a better yeah. fuck adult um, male role figure in my life. If I would have, I, I wouldn't have made the mistakes. Yeah. But I'm lucky I can be that for my son yeah. and stop him making the same mistake yeah. I did. And I have, yeah. and I have taught him that. Yeah. And, that's, and that's one thing I can hold my head up and say proudly. That's that, a good life, isn't it? But at that time, I could have had him doing anything, you know, yeah. but I wouldn't, never. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not, not one of those, kids, you know, start getting my kids involved in violence and things no. like that. I just don't agree, no. you know. But that's just that's, that's the way it's rolled out for yeah. me. It don't roll out like for no. everyone. Like if you live on the estate and and your kids are hanging around with other people, I'm just lucky he didn't live on the estate because it could have been different otherwise. Hello. Yo. Is that true? Yeah, man. Mark is coming over, he's just walking over now. Um, I'm decorating this week, so you can pop around if you want. Come in, mate. Hmm? Nothing like that, is it? 
Yeah. Live now, not later. Do a song. And that will fit in. Yeah, I did it all myself. Have a look, Mark. Nice. Got a little hearts on the back of it as well. Put on the arm. Now I take the dog for a walk yeah. Yeah. and the dog's growing and mm -hmm. we've got a spiritual connection. This yeah. might sound weird. I believe you believe The that. dog's growing and I'm <laughs> growing. We're growing with each other. We're growing with each other. I know. I, I, we've got a spiritual connection. I She's believe, growing and I'm growing. I believe. That I believe that and yeah, I do. I believe that it is true just because you believe it. So it's the power of belief makes it exactly. true. Exactly. To be fair, that's how you, got off, that's how you get off all the drugs. You know? Talking about the fire, hitting high notes like a kid on the choir. I got the shit, got the shit you desire. What you gonna do on the urban empire? What you gonna do, man, can't get higher. This is how we do it. Higher to the roof, set Charlie Sloth fire, make a fire in the booth. There's a fire in the booth, let the motherfucker burn. I'm 40 years old and I'm still gonna get my turn and I... <laughs> Your environment? Yeah, it. It influences who you are, of course it does. But you choose who you become as a man. And I chose who I was going to become as a man when I was 32 years old. It was there on the plate to me, given to me. Yeah. I know some people don't believe in God, but I don't give a shit, mate. It was given to me. I asked, yeah, for that to go. That craving for that dirty little drug just to go. And it was given to me on a plate. Like that, just from acceptance that there's something bigger and better than me out there, and I just pray to that now. My brother Peter, he's he's got about twenty lives, not nine lives, twenty lives. Do worry about his his um him passing away, but he's a, he's so much better now. Yeah, so much better now. Miracle. You know, some of them people you don't think will ever get off it, like. Yeah, I, I, I would have put him in that bracket for me. A lot of people will see this and be like, oh, well, he's, trying, he's trying to make music, like, well, what's the point? But a lot of people don't realise like, how worse off he was, which you can't really see. A lot, a lot of times what I thought, oh, it's over with my dad. When he would come over and my, him would be arguing with my mum, I thought, oh, I'm not seeing him again. Do you know, what? he's probably he's going to be in prison anyway. Which is a sad thing to say now, but at the time I was a teenager, you know, when you're, go, you're going through it all, you don't know really, you don't really know nothing about the world. So at the time I was like, you know, this whole dad thing, he's in prison anyway, you know, he's not, he's, he's not going to get any better. But it didn't, it took a long time for him to actually get better, but I think I, I respect about my dad for what he did. He didn't make false promises, which I see a lot of parents do to their children, they will say, Oh, I'm going to get better, trust me, I'm going, to, I'm going to get back on my feet, we're going to be fine. He didn't do that, he just showed me over a period of time. It did take a long time for me to trust my dad again. Since he's come off the drugs, you know what I mean? I think actually his son's is a lot to do with why he's got off it. And it's just flowered, really. It's got brilliant, remember? And what he's done with Mark here, and it is amazing. It's really good to see him like that in the market. Really proud of him. Really proud of him. He's come as well. You can come back from anything. You can go down to the bottom. You can be sleeping on a mattress, no money in your pocket whatsoever, and you can get to where I've come. Which might not be fucking. I might, you know, I might live in the ghetto and that. I might even live with my mum. But I'm doing things and I'm giving back. In general, I've got a lot of knowledge about drugs and, you know, I've got a lot of knowledge about prison. I've got a lot of knowledge about getting off of drugs. I've got a lot of knowledge about staying out of prison and how to do it. Do you know what I mean? Very hard. Before I wasn't a man, I was just a thief and a junkie. But it took me to be a thief and a junkie to be a real man. I beat up heroin. If you can beat up heroin, mate, you can beat up anything. But I've had a life. I enjoyed my fucking self doing it. it might have been fucked up in this wild, mad situation, but I felt alive. You can't feel more alive than when you're nearly dead. You don't understand that. When you come closer, you just, it's when you know you're alive.
yeah, I know, but I know you're good enough. I'm gonna send you the instrumentals, yeah, and 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 my lyrics, and just polish it the best you can. I, I've got faith in you. Just contemplating being a dad, and you know, like, life was, it was a big scary thing. And I went over Jackie Baker's stand to write a song. I wanted to write something special. It was a song, like, like it was a prayer. It was a prayer, it was a prayer for what I was doing. I was praying. Like God saying, yeah, I will do this for you. I will, I will write you a masterpiece, but you've got to bring me into it and show you how, show people what I can do. Like, through you, even you, even your messed up brain now, I can write a masterpiece through you. Oh, Father, what's in heaven? When I run away and hide, can you show me to your heaven? Please listen, my only escape was drug driven. Wanna answer from the man, not a suited politician, 50,000 miles away from his military mission. Hallowed be thy name, ain't it a shame how the streets have been polluted with smack and cocaine? My friends are dropping out flies, now they're dropping out the rain. Disconnected from their body, deportation from the brain. Thou kingdom come, oh shit, I got to run, they hold a needle to my body, to my head, they hold a gun. Thou will be done, middle aged at 21. When these cats come to get me, be a father to my son. Don't let him play with class A and be labelled another one. If his life is in danger, Lord, try and where to run. That's my son, top dog, only second to one. Give us our daily bread, keep us fed, keep away my enemies who put a label on my head. Forgive us our trespasses, what sort of mess is but Lord you gave me rap. I know that I've been blessed with this, as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is a hard thing to do Lord, but I know it's a must. You made the world that we're living in created from dust. Deliver us from evil, the name and other sequel. No matter what colour, every single man is equal. Lord, oh Lord, can you hear my cry? I wanna live it up with you, Lord, I don't wanna die. Mental catastrophe is passing by, burn the fire, blood for blood, Lord, it's eye for eye. Amen.